Ye hey there, my name is Jake, and I'm about to tell you a story of how my seemingly perfect life went downhill. It all started a couple of years ago when I met Emily, a beautiful, smart, fun girl who stole my heart in an instant. We met in college, at a party of mutual friends. I noticed her right away, a slender blonde with a radiant smile and a ringing laugh. We got to talking and discovered we had a ton of common interests, from a love for hipster cafes to a passion for hitchhiking. From that day on, we were inseparable. We walked the streets of New York hand in hand, watched art house films in small theaters, went out to the countryside on weekends. I was crazy about Emily, and she seemed to reciprocate. After six months, we moved in together, rented a small but cozy apartment in Brooklyn, furnished it with vintage furniture from flea markets, got a cat. In the evenings, we cooked dinner for two, chatted about everything, made love. I was sure I had met my soulmate. Of course, like in any relationship, we had our quarrels and misunderstandings, but we always found a compromise, learned to hear and understand each other. I saw our future together, wedding, kids, a house with a white picket fence, and it seemed Emily wanted that too. What made me especially happy was that we got along great with each other's parents. My mom immediately accepted Emily as her own, and her father, though quite strict and conservative, approved of our relationship. Take care of her son, he told me once. A girl like my Emily is hard to find, and I did. Carried her in my arms, pampered her with gifts, supported her in all her endeavors. When Emily got a promotion at work, I was the first to rush to hug and congratulate her. And then I threw a grand party in honor of her success. We made plans, wanted to go to Europe, then get married, have children. I was already looking at engagement rings and consulting with my best friend on how best to propose. Life seemed like a beautiful fairy tale, where I was the knight and Emily was my princess. But as we know, fairy tales are not without villains and obstacles. And our story, alas, was no exception. I could never have imagined that my beloved, my Emily, the one I wanted to spend the rest of my days with, would turn out to be a cunning deceiver who broke my heart. The first suspicions began to creep in when Emily started staying late at work more often, first for an hour or two, then until late at night. I understood that with her new position came more responsibilities, but something still didn't sit right with me. Emily brushed it off, said she was just tired and working a lot, but I noticed how she sometimes answered questions inappropriately, avoided my eyes, quickly put away her phone when I entered the room. I didn't want to believe it, but the facts spoke for themselves. Something was off. One day I couldn't take it anymore and directly asked her if something was going on at work. If she wasn't spending too much time with her colleagues, especially with this new boss of hers, Brad. Emily flared up, accused me of paranoia and jealousy for no reason. We had a fight, but I apologized. After all, did I have any reason not to trust her? Nevertheless, the worm of doubt continued to gnaw at my heart. I hated myself for these thoughts, but I couldn't help it. I started checking her phone more often, monitoring her reaction to certain topics. And to my horror, my suspicions only grew. And then something happened that put everything in its place. I was coming home from work and decided to surprise Emily, stop by her office so we could go to our favorite cafe together, bought her favorite lilies on the way, anticipating how happy she would be. But it wasn't me who got to be happy. When I entered the reception area, Emily's secretary gave me a strange look and mumbled that Miss Emily was out. Said she had left half an hour ago, citing an important meeting. I felt cold inside. All the excuses I had been hearing from Emily lately flashed through my head. Late meetings, business dinners, urgent projects. What if it was all just a cover? What if my girlfriend wasn't staying late at work at all? I ran out of the office, not knowing where I was going. My thoughts were jumbled. My heart was pounding like crazy. No, this can't be. Not Emily. She couldn't have done this to me, right? The truth turned out to be far more cruel than all my fears. Out of breath, I ran to the nearest bar where we sometimes hung out with Emily's colleagues and froze in my tracks. Through the shop window, I clearly saw Emily, my Emily, my beloved girlfriend, in the arms of another man, or rather, not just another, her boss, the damn Brad, they were sitting in the far corner, hands entwined, looking at each other in a way that left no doubt about the nature of their relationship. At that moment, I felt the ground slipping from under my feet. Pain, resentment, distrust, 
everything mixed into a poisonous cocktail, corroding me from the inside. I wanted to scream, burst into the bar, beat the crap out of Brad. But I just stood there, clutching the now useless lilies, feeling my heart shatter into a million pieces. The next few days passed as if in a fog. I couldn't eat, sleep, or work. Everything was falling out of my hands. My thoughts were confused. I replayed the scene I had witnessed over and over in my head, as if punishing myself. How could I have been so blind, so naive, to believe that I was the only one Emily would do anything for? She called, texted, tried to talk, but I didn't pick up. I didn't want to hear her lying voice, her clumsy excuses, because no matter what she said, I had seen it with my own eyes, seen something no loving man should ever see. At some point, the pain began to turn into anger, searing, all-consuming, demanding release. I wanted to make Emily suffer the way I was suffering. I wanted her to know what it was like to be betrayed by someone you love more than life. And then a plan hatched in my head. A plan for revenge that would quench my pain and make Emily regret what she had done. Oh yes, she would dance to my tune. She would learn what it was like to lose everything in an instant. I remembered our conversations about Emily's father, about how he dreamed of marrying off his daughter, awaited grandchildren, and how he prided himself on Emily's innocence and decency. Ha! If only he knew what his daughter was really like, running around bars with her married boss, stringing her fiancé G.C. along. A real dream girl, nothing to say. And then it hit me. Here it was, the perfect way to get back at Emily. Tell her father the whole truth. Destroy the pedestal he had put his beloved daughter on. Make her experience shame, humiliation, disappointment of a loved one. The very thing I was feeling now. Of course, somewhere in the back of my mind, there was a thought that this was mean and low, that I shouldn't involve her family in our relationship. But the hurt and anger quickly pushed those doubts to the back of my mind. After all, it was Emily's own fault. She didn't think she could string me along forever, did she? No way, honey, you broke my heart. Now I'll break your reputation, and to hell with the consequences. You'll dance to my tune now, your daddy will tear you a new one. And serves you right, you liar. You'll learn to think with your head, not with what you were using when you jumped into Brad's bed. Oh, my plan was perfect. All that was left was to put it into action. And damn me if I didn't do it. Revenge is a dish best served cold. Well, Emily, bon appetit. Now you'll find out what a world of hurt feels like. I timed the meeting with Emily's father perfectly, waited until she went off to another conference with Brad, yeah, sure, keep telling yourself that, and showed up at his house. Good thing I knew the address. We had been there many times as a family for holidays. Henry Morgan, a stately man in his 60s, was clearly surprised to see me at the door. No wonder, since I hadn't called or warned him about the visit. But why would I? It would be more fun to catch him off guard. Jake, what a surprise. He shook my hand, inviting me in. What brings you here? Emily's not in town. She's at a conference. Did something happen? I smirked crookedly. Something did happen, Henry. Oh, how it happened. Your little girl screwed up royally, and now you're about to find out. Have a seat, Henry. We need to have a serious talk. We settled in the living room. Henry was frowning in bewilderment, clearly not understanding what I was getting at. Well, I'm about to enlighten him. The thing is, Emily, she's been lying to you, and to me too, for a long time now. Henry's eyebrows shot up. What are you saying, Jake? Emily is an honest girl. She would never, never cheat on her fiancé see behind his back, I interrupted. Never sleep with a married man? You don't know your daughter well, Henry. And I laid it all out for him, about Emily's strange behavior, about her late nights at work, about how I caught her with Brad at the bar. Henry listened and his face grew darker with every sentence. It can't be, he mumbled when I finished. My Emily, my little girl. She promised to save herself for marriage. I snorted. Apparently she wasn't very diligent in keeping that promise, at least definitely not with me. And maybe it wasn't just Brad she was having fun with, who knows. So what were you saying about honesty? Henry sank heavily into the armchair, his head hanging low. I could almost physically feel his disappointment, the bitterness of realizing the truth. Well, now he'll feel firsthand what I felt. Serves you right, you old hypocrite. If you can't raise daughters properly, don't take it on. I, I'll talk to her. Today, as soon as she gets back, Henry said hollowly, I'll ask what this is all about. Demand an explanation.
Well, well, I chuckled. Good luck with that. Just don't be surprised if you hear another pack of lies in response. Emily's gotten pretty good at that. On that note, I bid farewell to Henry and left. The first stage of the plan was a success. Now I just had to wait for my unfaithful beloved to return to town and run into her daddy's righteous anger. Oh, he'd give her a merry life. I had no doubt about that. I didn't have to wait long. The very next day, there was a pounding on my apartment door as if at least a dozen zombies were hiding behind it. I lazily got up from the couch and went to open it, knowing full well who I would see on the threshold. Emily flew into the hallway like an enraged fury. Cheeks flushed, eyes flashing lightning, hair disheveled. She was furious, and I knew the reason for that fury all too well. What the hell, Jake? She yelled from the doorway. Have you completely lost your mind? Why did you tell my father all those nasty things about me and Brad? I crossed my arms over my chest and looked at her coldly. Well, well, aren't we bold? Not a shadow of remorse, not a drop of shame, just anger and resentment. Well, I'll put you in your place quickly, you liar. And hello to you too, dear. I see your daddy has already enlightened you about our conversation, shared his impressions of meeting the real Emily Morgan. Emily recoiled as if slapped. Pain flashed in her eyes, but I didn't feel an ounce of sympathy. She asked for it. She chose lies and betrayal herself. Let her deal with the consequences now. Why did you do it, Jake? She asked quietly, and I was surprised to see tears in her eyes. Why did you tell him? You knew how he would react, knew he would despise me. Oh, so you're only worried about your father's reaction? I asked venomously. What about me, Emily? My feelings, my broken heart? Or did you think I would tolerate your escapades forever and pretend not to notice anything? Emily sniffled, crumpling the hem of her dress in her hands. She looked pathetic and lost, almost like a beaten puppy. But it didn't move me anymore. The wound from her betrayal was too fresh, the pain too deep. Forgive me, Jake. I, I didn't want it to end up like this. I don't know what came over me. Brad, he courted me so much, said such things. I lost my head, but I only love you, I swear. I laughed, bitterly, frantically, almost hysterically. So that's how it is. Classic. Honey, it's not what you think. I love you. He means nothing to me. God, what a bitch she is. No shame, no conscience. You know what, Emily? Shove your excuses where the sun doesn't shine. I don't care if you love me or not. I don't care who you lost your head with and how. You betrayed me. Betrayed my trust, my feelings, our relationship. And I won't let it slide. I walked to the door and flung it open, looking pointedly at Emily. Now be so kind as to rid me of your presence, and you can run to your daddy for comfort, or to your Brad, if he hasn't told you to get lost yet. I hope the experience of dealing with the spoiled daughter of a rich father has done him some good. Emily stood frozen in the doorway, staring at me with huge, tear-filled eyes. Just a second ago, I wanted to hug her, comfort her, hold her close, but now... Now I only felt cold satisfaction. I had my revenge, humiliated her the same way she had humiliated me, made her feel used and abandoned. Goodbye, Emily, I threw out and slammed the door right in her face. That's it, period, the end of our story. There was no more Jake and Emily, no bright future and dreams of a wedding. There was only pain, disappointment and bitterness, and I had no regrets. Let Emily suffer. Let her berate herself, cry into her pillow, beg her father for forgiveness. I don't care. She got what she deserved. Serves her right, the lying cheater. Broke my heart. I broke her reputation. Seems like a fair trade to me. And I, I'll be fine. I'll get through it. I'll pull through. After all, I'm Jake. The damn Jake. Such blows of fate don't scare me. I'll lick my wounds, pull myself together, and move on. Only this time I'll be smarter. I won't trust pretty eyes and false promises. I won't let myself be strung along. My story with Emily has come to an end, but my own story is just beginning, and I'll be damned if I don't live it in a way that no one ever dares to break my heart again. Remember that, Emily Morgan. You were my biggest mistake, but definitely not my last love. Two years have passed since I broke up with Emily. Two years that I devoted to myself, my career, my hobbies. Life was slowly getting better. My heart was scarring over. My emotional wounds were healing. Of course, sometimes I thought of Emily. After all, no matter what our relationship was like, she was an important part of my life. But there was no regret, only a quiet sadness and relief that it was over. I was no longer angry with her. 
just accepted the fact that we weren't right for each other, that our story was doomed from the start, and that her betrayal was perhaps only a consequence of my own blindness. Sometimes rumors reached me about how her life had turned out. They said her father had cut off her financial support after learning about the affair with Brad that she had quit her job and left town, unable to bear the sidelong glances and whispers behind her back. Well, that's her choice, her penance for her mistakes. My mission was accomplished the day I exposed her deception. Emily's future fate no longer interested me. I moved forward, built a career, made new acquaintances, even tried to start a relationship a couple of times. True, so far, unsuccessfully. Apparently, the wound from Emily's betrayal was still making itself felt. But that's okay. I knew that one day I would meet the one, the only one, the one who would love me as much as I loved her, the one with whom we could build a real family based on trust and loyalty. But for now, for now, I just lived, worked, traveled, enjoyed freedom, and never for a second doubted the rightness of my decision to take revenge on Emily. After all, she pushed me to that step herself. And you know what? I have no regrets. Revenge is a dish best served cold. And damn how delicious it was. It may be ignoble, it may be petty, but it's so damn pleasant. I'm sorry, Emily, nothing personal, just business. Heart business, in which I turned out to be much more calculating than you. And next time, when you decide to break someone's heart, remember Jake, the very Jake who taught you a lesson in honesty. Believe me, you'd better learn it. That's all, ladies and gentlemen. The curtain has fallen. The moral lessons have been given out. Justice has triumphed, at least in my story. And in yours, who knows? But remember, betrayal does no good, and everything in this life has to be paid for. Did you like this story? Let us know in the comments what you liked. Subscribe to our storytelling podcast. Also, don't forget to like and ring the bell so you don't miss more interesting stories. See you soon.